On this episode, we're going to build the mast for the Haven 12 and a half. Welcome to the Art of Boat Building. Last summer when I was out at the Wooden Boat Show, I had the opportunity to talk with Alec Brainerd from Artisan Boat Works. Now they had just finished a replica of a Harishoff 12 and a half footer, so I asked Alec about the construction of the mast. And he said, oh, solid, always solid. Well, I decided to do a little bit of research on my own, and so I went to the Wooden Boat Forum uh, Facebook group, and I posed a question, and the question was, is at what point does it make sense to have a hollowed mast over a solid mast? Well, I got lots and lots of responses and comments. No one, however, answered the question. But what I did get was a lot of information about the construction of hollow mass compared to solid mass. And one of the things that was interesting to, to me was the experts on the page overwhelmingly preferred a solid mast. So let's take a look at what the differences between the construction of hollow mass are to a solid mast. So I put together some examples of how hollow mass are constructed. So if we look here at the first one, this is a bird's mouth mast, and this is a coopered mast, and of course, this is a solid mast. So let's talk first about the bird's mouth mast. So the bird's mouth mast gets its name from this little notch here that's like a bird's mouth. Now, the bird's mouth mast was actually developed in 1986 by Barry Noble uh, of Bristol, UK, and he later then sold the patent to R. Madison and Sons, also of Bristol, UK. Now, it's a fairly complicated uh, object to calculate. Uh, fortunately, there's a calculator online that's on the Duckworth's uh, website, and I'll leave a link in the description below so you can find that. So anyway, I calculated so that I had a three and a quarter inch mast, uh, which is what the Haven takes. So the next one, which was actually suggested by one of the experts on the wooden boat forum, was that to use a coopered mast. Now, a coopered mast is like uh, the way wine barrels are put together, and basically these eight-sided piece would have a 22 and a half degree cut on there. So you can see this is a much simpler way to do this joinery than a bird's mouth mast. It gets really complicated when you consider that the mast has to taper at the top and at the bottom. Uh, this is much easier to do that taper on the top and bottom. And of course, the easiest of all would be the solid mast. So the other thing you might say, well, wait a second, Bob. I don't have any Sitka spruce to build my mast. All I can get is dug fir. And dug fir weighs a lot more than Sitka spruce. Well, dug fir weighs 31 pounds per cubic foot. Sitka spruce weighs 29.2 pounds per cubic foot. So you can see it's hardly any difference at all. And definitely the amount of weight saving that you would gain would not offset the fact that it would be not as strong as a solid mast. So the other consideration that we discussed on my boat building clinic that I run every week on Thursdays at one o'clock central time is we talked about hollow mass. And one of the things that came up was a discussion about condensation that would form on the inside of the mast. And actually, one of the fellows knows a ship right out in the Port Townsend area who has experienced hollow mass condensating and rotting from the inside out. So if you're going to build a hollow mass, make sure you seal the inside as well. If you're interested in knowing more about the boat building clinic, there'll be a link below that you can go and check out more information about that. So in conclusion, the weight difference between the two of solid and hollow is insignificant. The hollow mass are much more labor intensive to construct and also they're prone to rot. 
a solid mast is stronger and it's much easier to shape the taper on a solid mast. As it's been my intention all along to build a solid mast, I had already procured the Sitka spruce that I need to do that. So that's what we'll do is to get started building a solid mast. So to get started, I began by milling out the two pieces of timber to the proper dimensions. You can see I've got the two timbers here all dry fitted on top of this aluminum I-beam that I had. So this beam is uh, 13 feet long, so my mast is 16, a little over 16 foot, so it only leaves about 18 inches on each end, which is fine. Now, why I'm using that is, A, it's perfectly flat, so that I know when I glue these down, I'll have my mast will be perfectly flat. Uh, and also, it gives me a place to clamp it on here, uh, which I'll be able to do that on both sides. So right now, I think I mentioned that I just have it dry fit right now to see how it'll work out. Now, one of the other things is because the beam is straight in this direction, then I can has a, have this all lined up perfectly flat with the edge of the I-beam. Uh, so anyway, the next step is to uh, glue it all up now that I'm happy with the drive fit and I'm going to use tight bond 3 glue. So you may be wondering why I'm going to use tight bond 3 glue. Now let me show the, these examples. So I glued up two examples with some spruce. This one I glued up with some epoxy and this one I glued up with some tight, tight bond 3. Um, as you know, both epoxy and tight bond 3 are waterproof glues, and both of them are stronger than spruce. So which one is stronger than the other is unimportant. But the important thing here is that we need to know that epoxy glue is a gap filling glue. You cannot clamp really tight. If you squeeze all of the glue out, it won't work. So I clamped this so that I still had a, a decent coverage, and you can see the line in here. Now both of these were sanded down to 120 grit, and you can see with the spruce here, the joint is almost non-existent. So in this application, this is a far better result than this. Now if for perhaps you were filling a gap, say you were doing a bird's mouth 
mast and you weren't sure that all of those were going to seat properly, then you probably would want to use the epoxy with some filler like this. So if you'd like to see me explain more the difference between epoxy and tight bond 3, you can check out this video here. So both glues are great glues. One is for gap filling, one is not. So in this application, the tight bond 3 is the best choice. So once I squeeze out the glue, I'm going to spread it with this notch trowel with these 1 16th inch notches. That way I'll get a nice even coat of glue on my glue up surfaces.
Well, now that I've got the mast all squared up at exactly three and one quarter inches, I now need to put the taper on the bottom and top of the mast. So those, that information is on the plans. Here we can see the three and three quarters and the three and three quarters. So this part is going to be perfectly straight. So on the bottom of the mast, over 25 inches, we can see that it tapers down to two and five eighths. So what I'm gonna do first is to measure over 25 inches and then lay out a batten so that it has a nice curve down to the two and five eighths. Now on the top, we go over five feet and another five feet, and then we can see that's where this three and a quarter lies. So from this three and a quarter to three inches in a five foot distance, it tapers. And then from the remaining five feet, it tapers down to two and one eight. So as I just mentioned, I'm going to start with the bottom of the mast and put that taper on it. First, I'm going to square off the bottom of it. So the first thing I did was I established a center line all the way down the length of the mast. Now I'll take this batten and I measure it over. So I'm two and five eighths. Well, now that I have the taper on two sides, I now need to put it on the other two sides. So what I'm going to do is lay that out exactly the way I did before. So now that I've got all four sides tapered and fared out fairly nicely, uh, now what I need to do is to turn the square into an octagon. And I'm going to use my spar maker's gauge to get the lines on there that if you'll remember that when you cut a 45 on here, the proportion you need is 7 to 10 to 7, which is what the spar maker gauge does. So I'm going to mark that off and on all four sides.
So I just fashioned a couple of uh, three-quarter inch plywoods with a uh, notch, 90 degree notch in here so that I can set the uh, mast in there while I'm working on it. So I thought I should mention that these sawhorses, this sawhorse is 25 inches to the top to the floor, and this sawhorse is uh, 17 inches. And when you stack them up, it ends up that the top is 34 inches, which is exactly the height of my workbench. Uh, so I built them this way so you could adjust how high you get the work pieces done. So we'll get this mast on there, and then we'll get started planing down those uh, 45s. So now the operation is to connect the two lines on both sides of uh, the sides here and get a flat surface. Um, to get started, it's fairly easy. Almost all power planers have a little uh, V-notch in it like this. And that will ride right on top of that um, edge there. So to get started, we get to do that. And then once we get one pass done, there is um, a nice flat surface for the plane to lay on. So we'll get started. Well, good morning. Uh, yesterday we got the mast all turned down to eight sides. And the next step is to turn it into 16 sides. So I'm going to do that with my power plane. It should not take more than one or two passes. And as the amount I take off varies, because it'll be more in the middle than on the ends where the taper is, then I can adjust it with the depth of the um, blade here. So I'm going to start with a pretty shallow at about 1 32nd, something like that. So anyway, let's get started. Well, that's it for 16 sides. Um, now what I need to do is make it 32 sides. And because it's such a very small amount, I'm going to use my block plane to knock that corner off and then work on my way down and slowly work it round. Now that I have the mast down to 32 sides, the next thing is to sand it perfectly round. And you can see on this, the upper end, I've already sanded it. And I've done that by using a device that was developed by David C. McIntosh, known as Bud McIntosh. He wrote a book, Building Wooden Boats. And I'll leave a link in the description. But what he come up with was a drum that a belt can run in outside in around it like this 
and a handle that can spin so you can hold on to it, and a variable speed drill. So I've used a uh, 5 16 inch uh, threaded rod through here. I've got a nut, and then I made a couple of larger discs here to help keep the belts uh, centered. And then a, a 5 8 dowel rod that I drilled a hole through. So let me show you how this works. At first, I need to put on my dust mask. Now, one of the tricks that I found was to not go full speed, but to really use a constant kind of speed as though you were hand sanding it. And then you're able to really watch it and not take too much off, because it can be a pretty aggressive um, procedure. So this goes in here like so, and then start it up. Well, the mast is all sanded, and there's only one more thing I need to do before I can fit it in the boat. And that is to cut this one inch tenon on the bottom of the mast. Well, I was hoping that I'd be able to stand the mast up in the boat, but even though I've got really tall ceilings here, they're still not tall enough. I think I was shy about 18 inches or so. So I'll have to wait until I get the boat outside in order to see the mast set up in it. Uh, one of the burning questions that I'm sure a lot of you are wondering is how much does this mast weigh? Well, I've weighed it and it weighs 23 pounds, which is actually pretty shocking to me. I thought it would be more than that, but it's, it's really very, very light. Um, now there's a couple of things that I'm gonna to need to do before I can actually completely finish and get some varnish on that. And they have to do with some bronze parts. So let me show you what some of those are. So both of these parts, Steve has modeled for me. So I've printed them both on my 3D printer. So the first object is the mass partner. And it's uh, of course printed in PLA and I will burn this out and cast it in bronze. But the way it works is it will sit on the mass like that, and then a clevis pin would go in here and, and hold that on there. Now this gets attached to the uh, forward bulkhead. Now the other object is the masthead cone. The masthead cone fits up here at the top of the mast, and you can see that I will need to uh, taper this down so that it will fit on there properly. Uh, and also this will be cast in bronze. So that's all we've got time for in this episode. Now next weekend, I'm going to be out in Mystic, Connecticut at the Wooden Boat Show. And I'll be located on Land A near the Oyster House. So I, if you're in the area, I hope that you can stop by and say hello. And if you can't, I'm going to be going live on Saturday at 10 Eastern Time and I'm going to be making a special announcement about the next boat. So as always, thanks for watching, and remember, if you're going to make it, make it beautiful.